Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to another RF Crypto video. It's not been good the last few days. The market hit $2 trillion uh, two days ago. Now it's down to $1.87 trillion in terms of market cap. It's a 4% decrease from yesterday alone. We see Bitcoin dropping by 5%. Interestingly, Ethereum has dropped by less than what Bitcoin has dropped. But this is due to the fact that Bitcoin is seen as a usually safe haven. And when there are risks in the market which cause people to go from riskier to less risky assets, Bitcoin usually takes most of the blunt. And this is what happened in this case. I mean, Bitcoin took a bigger beating than Ethereum and than most of the markets. If you can see, uh, Bitcoin is down by 5.5%, everything else by 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4. Some of them are 5%, but um, mostly. I think that Bitcoin has taken a bigger beating than the rest of the markets. If we look at the Bitcoin charts, as I said yesterday, the support level was at 43,000. And if there is any sort of bad news that uh, occurs and brings the price down, it could go down below this $43,000 support level. And the news would be so bad that not even the bulls would be able to hold on to that price or buy up the red candles in order to maintain the price above the support level and that's exactly what happened we'll speak about why bitcoin has dropped in the past 24 hours but the gist of it is basically that bitcoin was trading between 43,000 and 46,000 quite comfortably since the 7th of february so for about 10 days it was trading between this band and once the bad news hit you see the first red candle hitting the support level and then the second red candle with bulls unable to keep the price above this $43,000 support level it just kept on dropping and then these two subsequent red candles are just the leverage being flushed out of the market because a lot of the leverage that was in the market in the past few days were long positions we saw a spike in leverage which i think were mostly long positions because people were expecting um, the prices to go up but this wasn't the case and those positions were liquidated because once the price dropped to about forty-two thousand, their margins were already incredibly low which means that the positions had to be forcefully closed by the exchange because it reached the margin call. And when there are margin calls in place, it's a bad sign for the market because the expectation or the bet that the price would go up didn't come true. And the positions got liquidated, people are losing money. So more people are gonna exit Bitcoin. And this is what happened. And the price kept dropping all the way down to the $40,000 new support level. Once it touched this, it briefly, briefly touched this, it got bought up again. So now we have two new levels, uh, $40,000 support level and $43,000 resistance level. And I think this is where Bitcoin is going to be trading in the next few days. Uh, it's interesting to see how your previous support level is now your new resistance level. And your previous resistance level, when Bitcoin was uh, below 40000 is your new support level. Because remember, when Bitcoin was trading between 36000 and 40000 40000 was your resistance level. And when Bitcoin broke above this $40,000 uh, resistance level, it just kept on going up. And it's interesting to see how different points and you have different vital points across the price range can become either resistance or support depending on where the price is moving. So once upon a time, it was a resistance level and now it's a support level. So it's important to keep an eye on these two points. 40 to 43,000, it is the band where Bitcoin is going to be trading in the next few days. This 46,000 is put on pause, but... If Bitcoin rises to the point where it reaches 43,000, which is the new resistance level, and overshoots it, your 43,000 will become your new support level and, and 46,000 will become the new resistance level, which it was in the last few days. But in terms of leverage, we saw that leverage yesterday reached basically all-time highs, but it saw a slight drop today. And this is directly correlated with the drop in price of Bitcoin because this new leverage that was created in the last few days was mostly longs. And it was mostly longs because people expected the price to go up. Once the news hit that the, w what we're going to speak about in a moment, the price dropped. And once the price dropped, those leverage positions hit their margin calls, which means that the initial investment that the leveragers made could not sustain their investment. Imagine that you have $100 and you go into a 10 times leverage position. Now, with your $100, you invested $1,000 in Bitcoin. You invested $1,000 despite only having $100. That's called leverage. You're leveraging your position. You're investing more than you actually have. And let's assume that this position is in a long position, so you're expecting the price to go up. So you'll make a profit if the price goes up. But imagine now 
the price goes down. The price goes down so far that your $1,000 position becomes $899. What is your net result? It's negative $101. So you're in a $101 loss, but you invested $100. Your loss exceeds your initial investment. It doesn't make sense. When such a point comes, your positions get liquidated, you lose all your money, you lose your initial $100, and your uh, account goes to zero. So with options and futures or leverage products, you have the opportunity to make massive profits by investing more than you have, but you run the risk of losing everything if the price moves in the direction that you don't want it to move. And speaking about why Bitcoin dropped, is basically due to the Russia-Ukraine tensions, which pushed on stocks and crypto and at the same time pushed gold to eight time highs. Bitcoin fell basically 7% to 40,500, registering its largest single day decline since January 21st. It's been a month because of reports of Ukrainian forces and pro-Moscow rebels exchanging fire in eastern Ukraine. And when there are geopolitical tensions, when things are going wrong in the world, when there's an imminent uh, sort of conflict that's coming on, people tend to shy away from risky assets. They tend to go for safer haven like gold. And this is what happened. They mass sold crypto and they mass sold stocks, which caused the prices to decline. And they put that money in gold, which saw its price increase. And it's basically said that Wall Street has gone full de-risking mode, which is removing risk from their portfolio. And Bitcoin is paying the price. Fears over geopolitical concerns and potentially aggressive central bank tightening has cryptos across the board in free fall. And it's very ironic because a month ago, no one wanted to touch gold. Everyone was talking about cryptos. Everyone was talking about blue chip stocks, how it's going to the moon, how it's going to the moon. No one wanted to even look at gold because they thought that it wouldn't even keep up with inflation. Now, investors are scrambling for safe havens such as gold and obviously by extent bonds as geopolitical risks intensify and fears grow that central banks might go overboard with tightening monetary policy. And while increased institutional participation since March 2020 has legitimized Bitcoin as an asset, it has made the cryptocurrency more sensitive to risk off risk on trends in traditional markets. This is because once the cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, got involved or ingrained within institutions, it became much more correlated to high tech stocks or the Nasdaq, and it moves in the same direction. And you know, this is what happens when there's a lot of risk. People tend to shy away from those assets and they move in the same direction. And analysts foresee more pain for Bitcoin if the geopolitical tension escalates. And Bitcoin is the ultimate risky asset because it's a crypto. It's not regulated. Obviously, it will be more risky. And a Ukrainian invasion would keep crypto selling pressure going another 10 to 15 percent over the long term. However, if there is an actual full scale invasion, I think that the Bitcoin price is going to go down so low, so low that people are going to start doubting uh, Bitcoin as an asset itself. This is mainly because when a full scale invasion is in place, that's the ultimate risk. And that's when people are going to start getting out of crypto and going into safer assets like gold and mass. And I think with your $40,000 level, it might even go to 30, 20,000, who knows. But I mean, uh, the risks of invasion are what they say are low. The Ukrainian defense minister today said that the risk of full scale escalation is quite low. So I don't see Bitcoin going down to those levels. But it is something to keep an eye on. Geopolitical risk at the moment is as high as, as it has been in a very long time. And obviously, Bitcoin is paying the price. And with that, it comes to the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like, please hit the subscribe button and share this video with your friends and family. Invest wisely and cheers.